be acceptable to you, O Lord, our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. This morning we get the opening of the letter from Paul to the church in Rome. Now this church in Rome was a church that Paul actually hadn't been to yet. It was one, as he even said in this opening section we had here, that he'd been planning on going to many times to see them and to be with them and to help them. Not only to help them, but also to grow from their faith, right? Because this was a church that was started in Rome, not by Paul, which is an unusual thing. Paul was the one who started the majority of the churches that we knew beyond the area of Jerusalem, right? Corinth, Ephesus, Philippi, Thessalonica. These are all places that Paul had visited and helped to start churches. But Rome was a gathering of people who Paul didn't meet with at first. And they came together because they were learning about the faith. And they wanted to be together to proclaim that faith to the world. So Paul knew about this and Paul wanted to go and visit them. So he tried over and over again. But before that he wrote them a letter. And in that he introduces himself. And there's two really good lines in this section this morning, right? Other than the one that I just talked to the kids about, right? Because all of us are called to be saints. So claim that as your name this morning. You are a saint, regardless of what the person sitting next to you said. Regardless of what anybody else says about you. You are a saint. You are a beloved child of God. And that's something to hold tight to. No matter what happens in your life. No matter what kind of valleys you go through. God is always there. To hold you and to help you through. But there's two interesting lines in this passage this morning. One of them is verse 16. We spent quite a bit of time on it. at the Not this month's men Bible study. But last month's men Bible study. We started studying the book of Romans. And we got to that line. For I am not ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ. For it is the power of... I'm not ashamed of the gospel. It is the power of God for salvation to everyone who has faith, to the Jew first and also to the Greek. Why would Paul say to the Romans, I am not ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ? We understand that. First of all, we have to know what gospel is. What is the gospel of Jesus Christ? It's Those people in the back can't hear you. Good news. It's good news. The gospel is not the first four books of the New Testament. It's not written by Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. The gospel is literally the good news that Jesus Christ came, lived among us, knew who we were, died for each and every one of us, and rose again from the, from the dead so that each one of us could have life in, Jesus, in, in God. That's the good news of Jesus Christ. That's the gospel. I am not ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ. Why still? Okay, if that's what it is, why would Paul say this? Why would one be ashamed of that? That's not something that we readily understand, right? I could ask each and every one of you, how many of you are ashamed to say you're a Christian? very quiet right now. Right? We don't really think of it that way. But think about the way that it was when Paul was alive when this letter was written to the Romans. Because at this point in time, none of the Gospels had been written yet. When Paul writes this letter, it's probably about the late 50s, early 60s, maybe even mid-60s AD, Right? The Gospels aren't written until 65, 70 A.D. So we're still a little bit ahead of even when the Gospels are written. But what just happened not 30 years ago? Crucifixion. Jesus just died in a most abashed, ashamed way. He was hung on a cross for everybody to see. And now these people are going around saying, we worship that's our God. We worship this man who was hung on the tree. And in that day and age, it was something to be ashamed of. It was something that you didn't want everybody else to know. 
because you were associated with people who didn't follow the right religion. You were associated with people that didn't do the right things. And even today, sometimes, we don't want to tell people that we, what we believe or where we go to church because we're afraid of what they're going to say to us or what label they're going to put on us, right? We're very hesitant about what we say out in public because that, that very line of what we say then puts us, pigeonholes us into a place that we may not want to go, that we may not believe the things that that phrase pigeonholes us into. But Paul is unabashedly saying here that it doesn't matter what anybody wants to say about me. I believe that Jesus Christ walked on this earth, did what he did, what we, what we heard that he did, that he healed many people, that he did many miracles, and that he died at the hands of people who didn't understand what they were doing. And three days later, he walked out of the tomb. And because of that, each and every one of us can have life in God. And I am unashamed to say that, to stand before you and to let that be known. How many of us are ready and willing to do that today? It's not easy for me to get away from it. Because people ask me what I do if they don't know me, and I tell them I'm a pastor, and all of a sudden, their whole attitude changes. But you can hide from it. And my question is, and I don't want to see any hands, how many of us hide from it? Which leads us to the second verse that's very interesting in this reading this morning, which we didn't spend a lot of time on at the men's Bible study. But I kind of got a little bit of this understanding from where I was the past three days and hearing stories about um, how we're all interconnected in God. But verse 8. Paul just got done saying who he was. And, and, and what he believes, that he prays for these people and that he's obedient to God. And then he says in verse 8, First, I thank my God through Jesus Christ for all of you, because your faith is proclaimed throughout the world. Paul already knows about the faith that the Romans have. And this is before Facebook and Twitter and Instagram, and all of these other things. There's no social media. Reputation still proceeds you wherever you go, but it takes a lot longer for a letter to go by boat from Corinth to Rome than it does for somebody to look something up on the internet. But still, Paul knows about the faith of the Romans and the church that was started there. And how does he know that? Their faith is proclaimed throughout all of the world. And I wonder, is our faith proclaimed throughout all of the world? Does the world know what we believe? Does the world understand what we believe? Not believe what we believe, but does the world know what we believe? Does the world, world know when I say that I am a Christian, that I am someone who follows after Christ? What does that mean? And even in today's world, sometimes when we say that I'm a Christian, it comes with baggage that some of us don't want to have. We don't want to take on that stuff. But Paul's telling us that we can't be ashamed of what's going to happen. As I read this text a few weeks ago to think about this, the, the thing that stuck in my mind was a long time ago, I saw things that said something to the effect of, if you were ever arrested for being a Christian, would there be enough evidence to convict you? If you were ever put on trial for following Jesus, is there enough evidence to convict you? I think each one of us needs to look at our own lives. Because as I think about that, I wonder, is there enough evidence to convict me of being someone who follows after God and believes in what Jesus told us that he believes in? Because it's not enough to show up to worship on Sunday morning and say, I'm done with my religious duties. 
Because that's the same as going and standing in your garage way this afternoon and saying that you're a car. Standing in a garage doesn't make you a car. Just like coming to worship doesn't necessarily make you a disciple of Jesus. See, our lives have to show these things and we have to live in such a way that it's out loud to the world. Because our lives are not going to be pretty. And our lives are not going to be this beautiful thing that everybody's going to want to look at. Because each and every one of us has problems. Each and every one of us has issues. Each and every one of us has things that we deal with on a daily basis. That we don't want the rest of the world to see. You know, sometimes those things have to come out. Because if they don't, then we don't show how we're relying on God in the darkest moments of our lives. This has not been an easy week for me. There's been things that I've had to deal with this week that I wish I didn't. And I wouldn't push on anybody. But in those moments of walking through darkness... There's still moments of light when you see a group of people brought together at a synod assembly who didn't know each other and it just met hours before they started to to do worship for us. And you see the love of God flowing through their lives. That's the kind of witness that each and every one of us has to have in the world. You see, because things aren't always going to go good, because God never said that that's what's going to happen. But God said... If you rely on me, as Paul quotes here in Habakkuk, the one who is righteous will live by faith. I know that everything's not going to always be pretty, but I know beyond the shadow of a doubt that no matter what happens, that God is always going to be there with me. And that's the faith and the hope that I hope that each and every one of you can grab hold of. And say unabashedly when somebody asks you, what you believe, that I am a disciple of Christ. And no, it doesn't mean that things are always going to be easy. And no, I can't really always make sense of it. But I just know without a doubt that God is always going to be there for me. No matter what happens. So is there enough evidence to convict you of being a follower of Jesus? And are you ready to go into the world and to be unashamed of the fact that you follow Christ and live out his life? These are the things that we all need to come to terms with, that we need to understand. And then live your life out loud so that everyone can see how much God loves you and how much love they can have from God as well.